There is no product that we have promoted more on Fightful that I use while I'm awake than NordVPN.com slash Fightful. You guys have probably seen me anchored to my desk an awful lot for quite a while, and I've always got NordVPN on all my devices. That's because that's what NordVPN.com slash Fightful allows. You get the fastest VPN in the world on all your devices, on all your operating systems. It is so beneficial to have that versatility. Here at home, I put it on my router just in case, and I put it on my phone, laptop, desktop, PC, and smart TV. That allows you to get all the benefits. The online threat protection, the ability to change your virtual location with just one click, the ability to use that NordPass password manager, the file encryption tool, all that good stuff on everything. Also, you can subscribe to all those overseas services I'm telling you all about, all with 24-7 tech support and a 30-day money-back guarantee on top of an already amazing deal. Protect yourself on all your devices with nordvpn.com slash Fightful. What's up, you guys? Sean Rossap. Welcome to Fightful. It is April 8th, 2024. We've got Denise Salcedo here with us. She was at WrestleMania this weekend. I was there up until uh, Saturday. But we've got so much to talk about. An insane amount of wrestling news that we reported on FightfulSelect.com. I know Denise did media on Friday. I did media on Friday. She was there. It, it was a, a busy, wild week. Denise had appearances. She got chopped. I got punched in the face. There was so many things that happened throughout this weekend. Please leave a thumbs up on this video. Please subscribe. Dropped an interview with Finn Balor, Damian Priest last week. They're going to keep rolling in. Oh, man, where, where do we even start? Subscribe to Fightful uh, here on YouTube first off. We're here after NXT, SmackDown, uh, AEW Dynamite, and a big one this week. We're here every night. How about that? That makes it easy for you. We're here every night. In addition to that, Beyond the Bell with Andrew Zarian and Rich debuts here on Fightful tomorrow morning. We want to welcome Andrew Zarian and Rich to the Fightful family. We're building a super team here, and I'm so excited for it. Part of that super team is Denise Salcedo. You worked your ass off this weekend, Denise. You got hit. I well. did. It was very exciting, very exhilarating. Um, this was a crazy freaking week, man. I don't even know, like you said, like I don't even know where to begin. A lot happened this week. Got to be at the ECW arena, got chopped by Thunder Rosa, asked the rock a question, interviewed freaking fluffy. I don't know what to say. This was a good weekend. Um, very I good weekend. uh managed my new great friend, Shaza McKenzie. She didn't win a match. It wasn't because of my my fault, but you know what? Um I'm not. I'm not doing so well on this this return to wrestling thing, Denise. It's not going so well for me. Have you gotten any wins anywhere? No. Uh, Shaza beat me. Um, Shaza lost her match against Notorious Mimi. Now, granted, she was winning the match, and I tried to shout some encouragement at her, Denise. I said, "Shaza, you're doing great. It doesn't matter that she's." bigger than you and more talented than you and more athletic than you and is way younger than you and is already a reality star and has been signed by WWE. You've got the experience. And she, she leaned out and she goes, that's not helping. And then she lost and she lost. I threw Mimi into a wall for her. I mean, yeah, that's not very encouraging, Sean. I was why. showing her that I had her back and it was, it was an honor, but I, also uh, I lost, guess you can, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't want Battle you Royal. in my corner. Lost the rumble last week, I, but hey, you know what? I got another crack at it in two weeks. Paul Cade, April twenty first. Please join me, guys. Uh, we're gonna donate some money, help out some wonderful animals, Jeffersonville, Indiana. But let's get to Raw. Let's get to all the news. FightfulSelect.com, best five dollars in the business. You're gonna hear that referenced a few times. Michelle Tate, who uh, is the host of the Boo You Horror Pod, which is a sponsor of the Fightful Awards, says. Sean and Denise, not Raw related. Where do you think Matt Hardy ends up? You think he and Jeff are a package deal or will Jeff stay in AEW past his current contract? Thanks for your hard work this weekend. I'm going to follow up some details on that, but Fightful Select did report that at the stroke of midnight, Matt Hardy became a free agent. Now, an interesting note about this, Denise, he was supposed to be a free agent last month and they extended his deal just through WrestleMania, which is interesting I don't know where he would have fit in on WrestleMania. Man was still sitting there with his brother making six figures at WrestleCon this weekend. Insane lines that went seven hours long. But 
I mean, I could see him being a player coach somewhere. Uh, there, there's an awful lot that, that he could do. I, I, th- I feel like maybe there is one more Hardy Boys run in them, like a good run. And then that's probably it for them for, for that. And then they'll be, they're, they're already kind of a nostalgia act in that sense, but I would kind of like them to be like the old carnies type of stuff, like, like really play into that. But what, what do you got there? Um, it's interesting that you say that you still think there's, there's still a good run there. Possibly. It's really hard for me to say because I didn't really get to see much of that on AEW. I don't really feel like they gave us any indication that there could be. So for that reason, I'm just going to have to like wait and see on that end. And I mean, Jeff's still with AEW. So I don't know when this run with Matt and Jeff would happen again and where exactly it would happen. Um, I, yeah, so I'm a little bit on the, I'll just wait and see what happens. SmackDown is in Detroit this week. Percentage on Motor City Machine Guns. I'd say 50-50. I haven't heard about them going anywhere. What do you know about Jacob Fatu and Tama Tonga? Is Tama signed? Fightful Select reported that Tama Tonga was on the way there. Fightful Select's Corey Brennan reported that Jacob Fatu had told people that he was signed. Um, I have also heard that he told people that. Uh, Aston Langley says, any news on Julia? FightfulSelect.com's Corey Brennan reported that Julia would be on the NXT program uh, this past week, he's going to have an extensive update on her at noon Eastern tomorrow on Fightful Select. Let's talk about the draft, Denise. It was reported that later this month, uh, the, the draft is going to kick off. In Cincinnati, by the way, do you think I get drafted? Or do you think I get overlooked based on my you want to you want to you want to end this like great run that WWE is on? You know, they did 17 consecutive sellout shows. They well, why, freaking draft you. The, the company's done, bro. Well, listen, they've drafted Von Wagner and they never did anything with him. Or nah, he, he bro. If, if you get drafted to WWE, we're going to get the rise and fall book and your ass is going to be fucking chapter 42. <laughs> Cursing. Sean Ross Sapp ruined WWE Cursing. chapter. What I hope with this draft is that like Braun Breaker and Jade Cargill isn't are, aren't in it because like they just made a big deal about Nick Aldis signing them, right? Or signing them. So it wouldn't yeah. be it wouldn't make a lot of sense to do that. Well but I I don't know. I mean, they would have to be, right? Well, Jade just officially made her SmackDown debut last week, like officially. Yeah. And then Braun Breaker, same thing. And then today they just said Andrade. He's officially raw, right? That's what they said, raw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I feel like those people probably shouldn't be, but I don't think that's going to stop them, to be honest. Kami says, looks like Raw SmackDown starts to be drafted to NXT. Are we seeing NXT becoming more of a potential third brand? Meant to be watched from now on. Oh, boy, that's a lot of wrestling to keep up with. I'd almost prefer ECW to return or WCW if a third brand is introduced. No, they'll rock with their own NXT brand. But listen, later this year, NXT is going to debut on CW and uh, or whatever the hell it is. What is that? Is that what it is? CW, CW. And um, they need some firepower for that. And I I have no issue with that. Ava was on the show tonight. I thought Ava did great. Uh, She does not like it uh, when you tweet that her name is Ava Rain for for context. She definitely dunked on me over that last week because I said that Liberty Rhodes is going to give her three straight crossroads in the main event of WrestleMania, uh, which pretty much happened. I mean, that that would have been uh, just a, a, as likely to happen as some of the other things did. But Raphael says, question about the draft. Is NXT making picks too? Ava's comment during the segment with Aldis and Pierce made it seem like it. So I could see a situation like when the ECW did get to draft for their brand, where they were like, oh yeah, we, we've got a pick and it's going to be Kurt Angle. I could see somebody who is perceived as like a top name, but isn't in line for quite a top run to get drafted there. And I would imagine that talent would be like, uh, you know what? I get to hang out in Orlando. I don't have to travel that much. So I would imagine that somebody from the pool of people who live in Florida could end up going there for a while. And we've seen a lot of wrestlers meet great success there. Baron Corbin's killing it right now, Denise. 
Right. And I'm so over on the NXT side, they're very heavy on the women and their stories with the women are really great, but it's sort of drying up with the guys. Like aside from Trick and Mellow and that story is, you know, that's done with, there really wasn't that much. And I've been feeling like NXT really needs more guys. They need more guys um, and they just don't have enough. And so I can definitely see a situation where they do get a couple of guys to go down there and add some life into the show specifically for the men's division because the women right now, they're carrying that brand. Like that brand for me, in my opinion, it's about the women because they go out there, they have so many matches, so many segments, and you genuinely like what they're doing with the women there. And again, they just need to spice it up for the guys. And I did like that Ava Rain was included in this here today, because usually it's always just Adam and freaking Nick Aldis. And having Ava Rain there, I think added a little bit more of that respect factor, not just for her as a GM, but for the brand in its totality. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, the likes of like, like, a Braun Strowman drafted to NXT or something like that, because he's a name that's held some, some cachet. But even if he comes back, I don't know necessarily where he'd fit in unless they completely reinvent him. But I would love to see something like that. And maybe an established name uh, from, from SmackDown or Raw in the women's division. I would love to see Cedric and, and Ashanti go there as well, because what, what the hell else have they done uh, on, on the main roster? They haven't booked them at all. K775 says Wrestling Observer reported that Seth is out at least four weeks. Well, Fightful Select and our Scoops thread actually reported that he was set to take a little bit of time off and that he and Becky were not on the rundowns tonight. Uh, do you think he and Becky are on sabbatical until summer, provided they both re-sign? Well, um, dude, I, they've been so busy, man, right? Like, exactly. so busy. They need a break. Exactly. Seth worked through and to, to get over an injury, give him his time off. Becky, I was told, was m mega sick during Saturday. Like, they understated it on commentary. She had strep throat. And not only that, she had to do WrestleMania promo. She had to do a book tour right before that, Denise. It was probably the, the biggest onslaught of media she had ever done in her career. That's probably Give how them, she got sick, meaning, like, so many people yeah. and just, you know, obviously germs exchanging and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, give her her time off. Uh, give her her time off. Guys, get in your super chats, get in your humper chats. I didn't mention that, but hey, if you're watching here on youtube.com slash Fightful, donate a super chat. If you're watching on X, on Twitch, on anything like that, go to humperchats.com. That's H-U-M-P-E-R chats.com. We would greatly appreciate it. Murray says, is it official, Sean? WrestleMania 41, Minnesota? Why no announce? It ain't official until the announcement, my, uh, my friend. Anything can happen. I'll give you a good example. Denise, I think it was like Money in the Bank or something we covered in Vegas where we did the live oh, show. Oh, where right? they changed the arena, went from Allegiant to Garden. Was it the Garden? MGM Grand? MGM yeah, Grand. They, yeah, they switched it to something. But there were people I was talking to within WWE that they even were trying to change the entire city. And it was because they were going up against that boxing fight. So it's never official until it's official. I'm thinking that, do you think it's possibly because, you know, the crowd was pretty much dead night one because everyone was so cold that they're like now like, mm, maybe we shouldn't go to these cold cities. I hope. But I mean, at least with this, it's, it's they a have stadium. The dome. It's, it's, yeah. it's a dome. Yeah. But I feel like that's what I was thinking too because I'm like, they have a dome. And like, unless you have a dome and you're a cold city, like you shouldn't probably be getting WrestleMania. And I think we yeah. learned the lesson uh, this weekend here, but, um, but yeah, so I don't know. I still think that that may be something that they're considering. Who knows? Just running LA says, what's your advice to someone wanting to become a podcaster? What's the best way to learn? How did you two learn? Love the channel. Uh, be genuine. First off, produce content, get your lighting, get your, get your equipment. Um, don't, uh, don't, be anything but yourself don't be a, a fake character any anything of that uh make clips especially of your stuff but denise any advice just start a lot of people say they're gonna and they don't just yeah. start just start and worry about everything else afterwards yep that's what i always tell everybody just produce content and they go yeah but i don't have a job it doesn't matter if you have a job doing it 
do Bro, it on your own. You know what my, you know my first tripod was? A shoe box. It was a bunch of shoe boxes that I just stacked up on my bed, put my camera on top, and like I just like made it all ghetto with tape and shit. And it worked very nicely. And that was one of my first tripods. <laughs> it was wonderful. Mr. Acosta says, want to thank you again for taking a picture with me at Wally Mania and chatting with me briefly. Great meeting you both. Can confirm you are both nice. We met a lot of great people at Wally Mania. It was a good time. Denise, you met The Rock there. I did. I even took a picture with The Rock there. Somebody said, somebody said, why is Denise's head as big as The Rock? And uh, that's perfect for our next segue. Right here. Right here. We got a bobblehead sponsor. The greatest event in all sports entertainment is back. If you're looking to bring your favorite WWE superstars to your living room, we have the perfect items to snag. FOCO launched their XL bobbleheads of Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and Cody Rhodes this week, and Fightful has you covered. Click the link in our bio. Be sure to use the code FIGHTFUL10 at checkout. That's F-I-G-H-T-F-U-L-1-0 at checkout. Receive 10% off your order at checkout on in-stock bobbleheads on their website. Uh, right here, I've got a Jake the Snake. I've got Stone Cold Steve Austin. By God, I've got Shawn Michaels as well. We're proud to have FOCO as the official wrestling collectible company as our exclusive bobblehead sponsorship for Mania Weekend. FOCO is a leading manufacturer of sports and entertainment merchandise, celebrating more than 20 years in the industry. The company's always growing product lines includes apparel, accessories, toys, novelty items, and more. FOCO is licensed with all major sports leagues, including Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, NASCAR, MLS, NFL, and of course, WWE. Click that link in our description. Grab your officially licensed WWE bobbleheads now and find your fandom with FOCO. Matthew England says, was Austin ever planned for Mania? Trust me, I am, I am trying to find out. Trying to find out uh, as best I can. Um, yeah. Uh, here's an important note from Corey Brennan. There were five beach balls confiscated tonight, Denise. Oh, damn. Do you know what kind of no butt getting son of a bitch you got to be to bring a beach ball to a wrestling show? <gasps> I'm sorry. I like to have fun and I laugh at this stuff. I think it's hilarious. So lame. Not sure if asked before, was the point of bloodline rules felt like a standard no DQ match? That's what it was. It just was that. Uh, but I mean, it was it was a way to make it seem from a perception standpoint as if Cody Rhodes wouldn't be able to overcome it. Matthew England says, what Stephanie McMahon's status? Was it a one-off? Is she back in talent or executive capacity? FightfulSelect.com had a bit of a report on that uh, today. She would be welcomed back by almost everyone. The way that people in the company I spoke to took it was her was her from a perception standpoint picking WWE and the people that are there over her father. However, listen, there's still a whole ass lawsuit to go through. You know, when this news first emerged a couple of years ago, she was the one that brought out Vince and did a thank you Vince thing. It, it, there, there's still a lot to this, but as of now, I've not gotten no answer right. about what her, her full status is. So when triple H did the press scrum yesterday, Oh my God, I kept raising up my hand trying to get that freaking clarified because he had said she's home. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? Like, what exactly does it mean that she's home? Like, is this in an official capacity? But I didn't get my chance. But anyways, I kept thinking it the sure. whole time. And I kept thinking, someone's going to ask. Someone's going to ask. Someone's going to ask. And I was waiting. I was waiting. I don't know. It didn't happen. Well, Triple H kicked off WWE Raw tonight. He said that this was the biggest WrestleMania ever. Uh, there were thank you, Hunter Chance. I mean, listen, this this objectively does feel like a new era of WWE. From a production standpoint, from a booking standpoint, from a fan reaction standpoint, and this Raw felt like a Raw after Mania again. Last year's was so bad. Triple H ran in like the Tasmanian Devil, or, or Vince McMahon ran in like the Tasmanian Devil, ate the script, shit it out, and we got what we got. This was something that featured NXT talent, featured some names of return. CM Punk was there. The Rock was there. How did you feel about Triple H's opening speech? Well, I think it was good because, okay, night one, we got Triple H going out there. Night two, we got Stephanie McMahon going out there. And then here today, you get Triple H going out there. And I thought it was nice because 
you know, this time, obviously, they were indoors for Raw after Mania. But I feel that the way WrestleMania closed out both nights, specifically last night with Cody finishing his story, I think it led a lot of people left a lot of people in a really good mood. Like people felt good coming out of that show. Like, I don't think people walked out of that show being like, damn, I wasted my money going to WrestleMania. I don't think people felt that way at all. And so you could still feel that energy going into the show. And this really was one of my favorite personally, one of my favorite raw after manias, like in a while, like I felt at this point that it wasn't even worth it. Like during like last year, I thought to myself, like, why the hell did I even waste 40 bucks to go park my car to go freaking crypto and watch Raw after Mania after that? And I kind of felt bad because even today I was like, I'm going to go home. I'm not going to stick around for Raw after Mania. I can watch from home. Right. And but they really did a great job of keeping the energy that they had from this weekend and amplifying it a little bit more. I felt like this crowd um, sounded way better than uh, a lot of what we got during uh, Mania Weekend, especially the first day, unfortunately. But that's because it was really cold. Matthew England says, very few legit questions are asked at WDB Pressers. Can't help you there, buddy. I I'm rarely, rarely at those. So not a lot I can do with that. Sir Brendo says, Becky told, her, told Ariel her book tour runs through the European trip was your favorite part of Mania that wasn't Cody. Thank you for your hard work. Um, my favorite was Damian Priest winning the world title and that whole thing because I I just know him to be very, very good at what he does. He's always a, a friendly, welcoming presence. He's a pro. He worked very hard. And, I mean, I, I can't imagine a whole lot of people when he was working a 10-minute sprint on ROH Final Battle thought that he would be a world champion past the age of uh 41 so good for him good yeah for him. seriously there's a lot there was a lot going against that but um <clears throat> for me it was definitely becky lynch and rhea ripley and then learning afterwards that becky lynch was sick my god i'm sorry it's just like what the hell like you guys went out there and had such a great match i would have never known becky lynch was sick if they didn't actually tell us about that and I thought they went out there. They killed it opening night. And I feel like after, uh, you know, reading Becky Lynch's book and her talking about her journey through how she was really struggling and not really getting pro wrestling, like she was failing in the PC and just, you know, her leaving, not being in wrestling for several years and all of that. See, like seeing her have this moment, and I know she's had so many great WrestleMania moments, but this one for me felt differently now knowing that backstory, it it just it's it hit a lot more. Please leave a thumbs up on this video, guys. Malik Black says enjoyed Mania weekend. Dijak versus Oba versus Josh match of the year. Dijak's killing it, killing it, and Oba is oh man, Oba is that guy. That I haven't guy. seen Stand and Deliver yet. I'm gonna watch it tomorrow. Will says the Sarah feels more fan friendly. We know Vince would have. Uh, through the Rock and Roman match. Uh, also, we're going to see this Wednesday how it all changed and, and was altered. Uh, I mean, Triple H it confirmed in the trailer it was not audible for anybody that said that it was happening all, all around. Trevor L says, thank you both for all around great coverage. Do you miss not knowing things and getting worked like normal fans? I get worked plenty. There are plenty of surprises and things that I don't expect that happen. I enjoy wrestling in a different way. Like, I... I get validation out of accurately reporting things and and all that. Denise, does you covering it affect it for uh, affect it for you as a fan? Sometimes, yes. Okay. <laughs> sometimes, yes. I won't go into detail, but sometimes, yeah, yes. I know. Um, <laughs> but I will say this though: like you get validation with your reporting, I get validation when my interviews are liked by people. That's uh, yeah, absolutely. Do either of you think the footage being aired on Dynamite will affect Punk's WWE career? Not fan perception, but lead to disciplinary action. Nope. They knew what they were getting into. They're fine with it. Punk has been completely fine in WWE. He has been nothing but good in WWE. It wasn't working in AEW. We talked at length last week. But listen, I'll, I'll open up on how I feel about this. AEW was going to just not mention any of this ever again. After the aerial interview, it was tossed around because they feel like it was misrepresented. A 
after all the shots that were taken last week, that's when they're like, okay, we're doing this. It is supposed to be the Jack Perry punk footage. Uh, as of now, I don't get with the fake outrage everybody has acting like it. I don't see a negative. And I see people saying, how do you not see the negative? You, you mean to tell me that because they're airing this footage, there's going to be like some giant group of people that are like, well, we're not watching AEW anymore. I've heard people say, well, they're featuring a guy that's not on their show. I see that with celebrities all the time. I see celebrities roll in promoting something else. They do something that is completely inconsequential to the show. They're never to be seen again. And a lot of times they're really damn bad about it. Either way, it's going to be hilarious. So I'm here for that. I, and I know what people will say, well, you guys make a lot of money off this. You know what? I would sacrifice all that money to never have to cover some petty CM Punk bullshit again, because it gives me fucking anxiety. I've been covering this shit for over 10 years now. Since Royal Rumble 2014, give us a break. Let us chill. But either way, it's happening. We're going to make the best out of it. Um, well, first, second, first of all, I don't agree with your second statement, okay? BTW, if it makes money, I want it, all right? Let's sure, go. Let's fair. freaking go. I don't care. Fair. I'm in this thing to make money, okay? I got bills to pay, all right? But anyways, no, I'm real. in all realness, my theory in regards to all of this is that this weekend, going into WrestleMania, WWE's biggest week ever. I think there was a lot of pun time spent punching down on AEW when it they didn't have to. We had the CM Punk stuff with Ariel Helwani. We had the Triple H quotes that were thrown around. Hell, even a Pat McAfee quote uh, with the yeah. Rhea Ripley thing. There was a lot of punching down this week. And I think my theory on this is Tony Khan had enough. And it's funny, too, because Wednesday or on one podcast, I forgot what it was, where I said the fact that Tony Khan isn't tweeting about this tells me he has something else planned in store. That's sure. literally what I was thinking. I'm I like, the fact that he lawsuit. hasn't tweeted. I, I thought so, too. I thought that, too. But I'm like, he hasn't tweeted. There's something he either has in his back pocket, which was clearly this, or he's, you know, thinking of brainstorming up something to do, right? Okay, so now we find out this is what it is. And uh, Sean, if someone keeps punching down at you, eventually you're going to want to fire back. Now, yeah. my theory on this video is I can only imagine they're rolling it if it makes CM Punk look bad. If it doesn't, then they wouldn't be rolling it. And now I want to, I want to, yeah, that's what they feel too. And now here's the thing. Is it punching down if it's all true? Okay. It's true that they have 600 people in their audience. That's, that's true. No, it wasn't fucking true. That's, that's the point. That's, that's part of this. I have no problem with like friendly competition stuff. This clearly isn't friendly. Now I've, I've got some people saying a few things that I want to address. Um, Let's see. I, I just don't see the payoff, and it shows Perry getting choked and makes him look weak, and Punk look tough. It doesn't help the storyline going forward. Well, I don't know, and I, I reserve the right to change my mind after Wednesday. If it airs Wednesday and it's stupid, well, then, hey, okay. But what, I hope it's not. I, like I got people talking about taking away from in the ring. Denise, we are about to talk about a 45-minute talking segment. Yeah. 40, like, it. that's not all wrestling is. Wrestling is a variety show now. Does it directly contradict a lot of the stuff that Adam Copeland said last week? Hell yeah, it does. But I, I don't see this overwhelming negative and this faux outrage. And I'll tell you another thing that annoys me. You're going to see a bunch of fucking weenies on the internet and old heads be like, they're not growing their audience. They need to worry about growing their audience. Y'all don't give a fuck about them growing their audience. You care about them promoting a wrestling show the way that you want it. The way that that is. And guess what? There's a million wrestling promotions out there. You can find one that does things the way that you want to do it. WDB is real good right now. Watch it. You got to around the audience. You don't give a damn about them growing the audience. You don't care. What, they're supposed to book to some mythical casual fan that doesn't exist and will probably be satisfied by the WDB product anyway? No, you should probably book for the, the fans that you have. And hey, you know what? This is something 
that is going to get a lot of people to tune in that wouldn't otherwise tune in. Plenty of them will only watch this segment, but some of them are going to hang around and hopefully what AEW does is show them that they can put on a good show. Hopefully. So my theory on this with this video is, look, they're only showing it for, they're not going to show it if it makes CM Punk look great. That doesn't make sense. So they're showing it for a specific reason. So the only thing that I can think of is maybe, just maybe the way that it, the situation was said to have gone down isn't the way that it necessarily played out. Because I can't imagine them playing this tape if it makes CM Punk look good. I can only imagine it if it doesn't. Yeah, and I agree. Here's This is the biggest thing, and I agree with Amos here. The mo Most people have already picked their sides here. More most people just know what they are already doing. Brian I'm excited. Says, Honestly, can I just say I'm excited? I'm I'm sorry. I yeah. love the drama. I'm so excited to see what the hell is gonna go down. I, I just I don't know. Like this is I I don't know. I think it's gonna be crazy and everyone's gonna get crazy, but at the end of the day, it's just something you're seeing on TV. Brian Fair says, Here's your flower, Sean. Awesome job. Uh keep us up and for keeping us up to date. Well, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. Um, like, listen, I, I just want to say people who say stuff like this, please don't mean to me, mean to AEW only AEW can be mean to WWE. I, I want to sincerely say this to you and people who act like this. You're a fucking idiot. You're a fucking idiot. Healthy competition is completely fine. Triple H calling it a piss ant company joking around with his friend is completely fine. Taking little harmless shots, completely fine. I wasn't backstage, so I don't know how much of what CM Punk said uh, was the truth. But like people who live and die for these companies are fucking idiots. Because let me tell you, Nick Khan and Tony Khan are not going to be here to hire you. If it all goes to shit, they will not be here to save you. They have no sense of loyalty to you besides hopefully creating a wrestling show that you like. Please do not make your entire personality that. That's weird. Here's a great exercise. Read some of your tweets aloud to a loved one. If they look at you like you're a moron, you should probably not be tweeting those things. <laughs> now Cadillac I kind of want to do that says, for fun. Just read my tweets to like my mom or hey, something. Listen, See what some she of them says. would have people side-eyeing me as well. Uh, <laughs> I laugh says, at your tweets all the time because after I read them, I do my my Sean Ross sap voice and then I steal, I steal some of your Muted. Cadillac Carson says, not going to lie. I want to see the footage. Whatever happens after that happens. I was well. Did I was you putting yourself? you over. Literally, you just muted me as I was putting you over. S Congratulations. You screwed yourself. Fernando says, here's my thought. I would have preferred Tony doing an interview with the media and defending himself. Here's two things that can happen. It makes Punk look bad. AEW feels vindicated or it doesn't. And they dug a, up a huge hole. Listen, it's he said, she said, if he goes and does an interview. Video is indisputable proof. And I, I will say this. I, I have heard... That from the time that CM Punk had asked Tony to do something and the time where he did something himself, there were measures taken. The, it was it was relayed to get Jack Perry out of the building. It just no, not enough time was given there, man. Also, the busted open interview took some shots as well. Jade was extremely professional, but they acted like AEW dropped the ball with her. Jade is always nothing but a professional. She is always incredibly professional. Um, Jade, right now, first of all, I love Jade, but without the presentation of which AEW did for her, WWE would not have put her in the position that she is in right now. Sure. RB says, any word on Jack Perry after all this? I figured the only value was him being, if the video is hyper damning or if it leads to more heat on him. Uh, Jack Perry, uh, I mean, listen, if he comes out looking better in this than was perceived, I think it could benefit him a lot. I think he should be with the Young Bucks, to be honest with you. I think they should capitalize on that heat. Perception is reality. Do it. 
I don't know, man. I'm excited and I'm scared because I don't know what we're going to be seeing on there. And it's going to change people's opinions about people that you like or don't like. Or I mean, I don't know what's worse. What's worse? Someone you don't like looking great in the video or someone you like looking horribly in the video. Sure. You know, like, I don't know what I don't know what the situation is. I'm scared and excited. Nick DeVito says, hey, guys, thanks for all the news and content this weekend. You do a great job. Sorry if this is covered. Is there anything the video could show that would make people change their mind on Punk or upset people in WWE? I Upset people in WWE? I don't think so. Maybe side-eye them. If it is like Jack Perry with his back turned and CM Punk jumps on his back, I think that could certainly do some, some stuff. But I don't really know how that... When? erratic behavior if it comes across as like erratic behavior i think that could be like a red flag of like oh this wasn't the confrontation that it seemed like it was if it comes across as erratic behavior then people are going to be like oh is this you know what the conversation is going to be like on twitter you you yeah. know it well drew make a comment on the video next week i would I hope so i hope so but i mean here's another interesting thing ftr are working the young bucks and they're There's, best and I, the CM people, Punk, yeah. And FightfulSelect.com did a big report on this. I asked, like, how do they feel about it? And I've, I've reached out to them interpersonally, haven't heard back, but the people I talked to said that they find it hard to believe that Dax and Cash weren't given a heads up because of how much Tony respects them and how they might feel about it. But Well, not only that, they would have to know about it. They're part of the program, and you know? Well, I mean, no, they didn't have to have been given a heads up that that was airing with, from the Bucks. But uh, we do have Raw After Mania to talk about. Cody Rhodes is brought out. They ran a very touching video uh, for him. And Cody Rhodes cut a promo about how he went from undesirable to undeniable to undisputed. And he's interrupted by The Rock. Edwin says new championship design, or has that been dropped? I I was never reporting a new championship design or anything like that. So uh, Christian says, looking back, how do you think, or do you think it was the right choice for Cody losing last year at Mania? Um, I, I'll say this. I'm in the bygones are bygones line of thinking of it because now we have a truly Vince McMahonless WWE to where we can enjoy this WWE emerged hotter from it, but I think he probably should have won it last year, but you know what? This year was very special. So um, I'm not upset by it now. It was Any special. Thoughts? It was very special last night. I feel yeah. like it's, I don't even know anymore. I don't want to talk about WrestleMania 39 anymore. <laughs> I'm done talking about that. I'm so over with it. Do you think Cody goes to SmackDown for the eventual move to USA Network or does he stay on Raw? I think he goes to SmackDown. I think he'll be on SmackDown and be on the USA Network. And what I think is, I bet WWE Raw gets extended for USA through the end of the year. And then he's on both shows briefly. I think that'll happen. Well, The Rock's out. This segment uh, went quite long. But The Rock... And Cody had this awkward situation where they handed each other their belts and the rocks like, ah, that feels great. He said that his story with Roman Reigns is over, but the one with him is just beginning and he's got to go away for a while, but he's coming back. The rock also dropped the line and says the rock is a lot of things, but sucks. Isn't one of them. That was the line he cut in his first heel promo in 1997 when he went from Rocky Maivia to the rock. So a nice call back there. However, at the end of this promo, he's like, I'm going to give you something. And he drops something in Cody's hand. It says, you don't have to open your hand to know what this is, but don't break my heart again. This was a lot of time, Denise, but I was hanging on every second of it. I was, I liked it a lot. I did too. I did too. I know it was a long time, but I did too. But what did he mean by don't break my heart again? Maybe it was his hotel room key, Denise. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't Great. Now my brain just went somewhere totally different. Now I'm just picturing things I shouldn't be picturing. Thanks, Sean. Um, <laughs> Dude, 
I was going somewhere with this. Now I completely lost it. Um, all right. So that was my whole thing. What did he mean by breaking his heart? I, I like that they left this as a cliffhanger, right? Because now everybody's going, well, what did he give them? What did he give them? I, whenever the rock comes back, whenever that time period is, I want, I don't want at any point right now to find out what that thing is. I'm okay with waiting. I'm so sure. okay with waiting until the rock comes back for us to find out what it is that he actually gave him. Cause then I'll be like, Ooh, now we get to know, right? Like officially. So that kind of left me very excited. I did think it was awkward. And I was so glad that the, the, the crowd started chanting. This is awkward when they both exchanged belts. Cause I'm like, ill. like, first of all, I'm, if I'm Cody. I don't want to let no one touch my belt. Like, let's be yeah. real. Like that's just weird. Um, and so the way that I saw it was okay, Sean, you just get married. And someone comes up to you. It's like, Hey man, congratulations. Love your love your wedding. You guys look great. Can I kiss your bride? Think about that. That's what that felt like to me. Like, no, you cannot kiss my bride. No, you cannot touch my belt. They don't sell replica wives though on the on the shop site. It was just weird. I didn't like the idea of something that Cody worked so hard for, for all of a sudden for Rock to hold it for a little bit. I did like that he was at least like, well, then I'll hold yours. And I'm like, this is weird. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> They're going to feel the same. The tension was wild in this. And the crowd yes. saying this is awkward as well. That's why I did like this, though, because the crowd was invested in it. And I think the crowd being so invested in it made it really go like the, the, the way that the crowd was booing the rock the way that they were just reacting to everything i loved all of that and that's what kind of kept me engaged with this but yeah it was a little weird and i was like where are they going with this like what's going to be the big eruption yeah. moment and uh i don't no, know if we i don't think we're gonna see that it. on camera denise but if you want a big eruption moment you know fightful and blue chew have been at it a long time maybe you've been at it a long time Maybe you're lacking that motivation. Maybe you're lacking that confidence. You don't think you have what you once had. Blue Chew is here to get you there. BlueChew.com and the code Fightful. You'll get your first shipment free of what? Well, it's a chewable tablet that has the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. So it gets your performance ready to go. It's prescribed online. It ships straight to your door. You do an online consultation. And if approved, you'll be back to that main event level performance. Sometimes it's not even about performance. It's about that confidence. And Blue Chew is going to make sure that you have that. Blue Chew and the code Fightful. Your first shipment free. You just pay $5 shipping. What is there to lose? BlueChew.com and the code Fightful. John Taylor uh, sent a generous super chat and said, Cody Rock shippers are ramping up that sweet fanfic. <laughs> Trey says, was the item the Rock side plates? Uh, you know what? That, that that's an interesting thought uh tony says replica wives from foco man come on now vic says rock finish my story cody good god what i don't want to get that one stop rock Yo, hard yes. joel wood says i think this has something to do with cody giving up his mania spot and don't break my heart refers to cody changing his mind and taking away rocks match with oh, Roman. okay that makes more sense now because i was like huh <laughs> tronin says he put a black adam ticket in his hand yo <laughs> laying the smack down wrestling and sports says when do you think they do roman cody match three i think years from now they go back to it years from now is years. the rubber match yeah. years years yeah Omar says, did The Rock give Cody MJF's ring, SRS and Denise? Very clever. Meet Norma says, it's a new era. Let's crank. For me, the story ain't finished till Cody gets the wean needle. When, it, when will it happen? Give me what I want. He does want it. He does want it. Um, whether or not he gets it, I don't know. You know, when Snoop Dogg runs around with that W title belt and Patrick Mahomes has it and all that stuff, if... Jason Kelsey slips one to his brother's girlfriend or something like that. Let me tell you, it'll be, it's worth it to have that W uh, logo on there. What Denise? I just don't like the refray. You rephrase that by the way, please. I'm listening. I'm, I'm saying, okay, please. It works out pretty girlfriend. well. <sighs> please. SRS with P Diddy I'm jokes. I didn't, make any I didn't make, I just want to say this. I ain't made a motherfucking P Diddy joke. I don't, I don't play about that. That ain't funny to me. Um, Jay Hudson says, 
Do you think since Triple H has returned to WWE in a full-time capacity, he re-energized the WWE fan base uh, while also taking some momentum that AEW had? Thoughts on the job Triple H has done thus far? Creatively, I think he's done a fantastic job. Um, it usually everything kind of makes sense, and I think that that I mean that is the the base. Sean, your mic is out. I punched my own microphone and muted it. Yeah. Uh, making sense karma, is the baseline the for me, and they, they seem to do that pretty well. I want to see winners get rewarded. I agree with you on the creative standpoint. I think he's been doing a really strong job. I think the one thing that is interesting, though, is when is there going to be a really, really hot free agent that – they win over AEW. I think that is one thing that I do think needs to be a stronger. I think it needs to be a bigger conversation. Because I don't think that they, Jacob Fatu and Julia were ones that AEW were particularly. No, after. I'm talking your Okada's, your Will Osprey. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, we did get Black Adam and Peacemaker Sunday night. Yeah, we did. Who will be the face of the Rock and Roman feud? Oh, I, I think Roman's the baby face there. I think Rock is perfect as a final boss he's incredible mr torman says my vote is a piece of roman's lay implying he took him out off screen and said that he had to it's sad that he had to do it well he implied that cody already knew what it was yes damn i love this i love not knowing i love just speculating i love that this is a question we're going to keep getting it seems like I it was in a box too by the way from what okay. I kind of saw, it seemed like it was a little bit of a black box. Sure. But I just, from what I saw, I didn't see much. Tony thinks it's a friendship bracelet. Well, I'll we are going to continue talking. Yeah, we're going to continue talking about this, guys. But uh, Shinsuke Nakamura faced Ilya Dragunov, as reported by FightfulSelect.com. Best $5 in the business. Ilya Dragunov says he will be a part of the draft. Jordan says Shinsuke back in NXT would be dope. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that either. He could surf plenty. Ilya on Raw. Good. It's a great commercial for NXT. And if they're going to be involved in the draft, then I say, hell yeah, feature them. Why not? I love this because this was a perfect ex example of the difference between Vince and Triple H. Because to me, if this was, be honest, Sean, Vince McMahon, if this would have been this last year, Ilya versus Shinsuke, who would have won that match? Hmm. Um, Shinsuke. Exactly. And yeah. I did not want to see that. I did not want to see the NXT champion uh, lose in this particular matchup. And so I was so happy that they recognized that uh, and that Ilya got this victory. And over Shinsuke, like, he's just not a, he's not a nobody. It means something. I was so freaking thrilled at this. I thought Ilya looked great. I thought the way that he won was phenomenal. And if you don't watch NXT, I feel like you got a little bit enough to say, hmm, that's their champion? All right, cool. Good to know. Um, I really enjoyed that they had this match, and I was very happy he got the victory. Judgment Day cut a promo. Not so magical. Mike says, I wish the women's and men's belt had different design. Rhea and Damian looked like mixed tag champs than world champs holding the belts up, in my opinion. I disagree. I think it puts them on an even plane. The top champions fight for a prize that looks similar. And uh, I also just love how much Judgment Day is there for each other. The, the pride on Finn Balor and Damian Priest's face when I asked them about Dominic Mysterio this past Friday was really heartwarming to see. And, I mean, I know that they are all very close. Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley were close friends well before Judgment Day was a thing. You could always see them, like, taking pictures together and all that stuff. And that was furthered here. Damian Priest has some new music. And I don't, I, if it's Def Rebel, it's one of their best. Uh, I thought the theme slap. Did you hear it, Denise? I heard it. I couldn't, like, I guess I just didn't really realize it. But, yeah, no, oh, yeah. I did hear it. I got to hear it, it again, though, to be honest. It was good stuff, and they they hold up the title belt, and then our truth sneaks into the back and holds up his, and I just love it. He said, "I brought the tag titles back to the Judgment Day," and Miz comes out. He goes, "Listen, I know you all are picky, but I'm only one half of the tag champion, so we got to talk about letting Miz in." Uh, <laughs> oh, Damien said that he made it himself. Oh, okay. shit. 
Hell, well, I mean, let me tell you. There you you go. If he did, it rules, but. That's probably why, because we finally, because we've been talking about how not so great the themes have been. So there you go. That's why it was good, because somebody Somebody else did it. Somebody said Def Rebel uh, makes a good theme. It's got to be an eclipse. Um, Yeah, I'll I'll see what I can find out. But yeah, I I don't, man, I, I didn't see where he said that. But you know what? If he did, well, what a talent. What a talent. Truth says that he was going to team with uh, Miz and the man you can't see, and everybody picked up on it. I'll tell you who also picked up on it, FightfulSelect.com. Best $5 in the business because we reported it tonight. But, like, if Cena knew he was teaming with them, he's like Zach Morris in Saved by the Bell. He's still a, he's still a dick, Denise. What took him so long? Right? I was like thinking earlier when the first beat down, I'm like, okay, this is the part where John Cena comes out. And then he did it. And I was like, okay, well, what then he's coming out later. Ass. Yeah. Yeah. He took well, he long. showed up. And now John Cena has technically wrestled a match every year since 2002 for WWE and 1999 in general. He said today on the Pat McAfee show that he wants to take some time off from Hollywood after Christmas and do one final run in WWE. And based on what we saw, you know, last year and all that stuff, I think he's realistic about it. Wants to do his final run and then he'll probably wrap it up. And, you know, I respect that because there are an awful lot of people that would continue till their 50s and all that. But nah, man, I get sad whenever I see people wrap it up because I'm like, shit, they're they're like the people I watch as a kid. If they're getting old, what does that mean for me? I'm also getting old. We're all getting old. You know how depressing that is? I don't want to think about it. So uh, Cadillac Carson says, even though they're heels, seeing Judgment Day celebrate on Sunday after Priest won the title warmed my heart. Well, also, the fans were chanting, you deserve it. I like that they will boo him, but they will also show him respect that he does deserve. Uh, Awesome truth in Cena win this. The boyhood dream comes true. Our truth teams with his childhood friend. I love that. Or his childhood idol. Childhood hero, right? That's Childhood hero. Fun stuff. This is what I've always talked about, Denise. If you've got him in town, put him in a damn match. I was surprised by that, too. I mean, obviously, we all knew the second the guy you can't see. We all knew it was was, uh, John Cena. But um, I was kind of surprised that he stuck around and that he was here for Raw after me. Yeah, I would have expected him to be back in Hollywood by now. He should have been on the same flight. Just kidding. (laughs) I ain't flying on the same flight as John Cena. We ain't in the same tax bracket, bracket, bro. (laughs) RJ says it was the keys to the TKO office that Dwayne put there. And Jonathan Corona says, um, when do you think WWE got hot? Like which year? Uh, last year. I think last year, especially as Cody came back for the rumble, things heated up an awful lot. Uh, could we see more small sets? I think when the ticket sales dictate it, we're going to see this. Tony says that he gave Cody the key to Shane McMahon's lockbox. I'm trying to find a writer who was on the staff then that will will tell me what the hell that was supposed to be about. How long do you think Roman will be out for? I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see him until SummerSlam or something like that. Uh, Joel Wood says, Cena watched his partner get their asses beat, came in for 90 seconds, hit all of his spots, got the three count. I want to be hit like him when I grow up. Bless him. Work smarter, not harder. That's what he did. Greatest hits, bro. Sometimes you just want to go to a show and see the greatest hits. Kim Gray says, I'll be so sad when Cena retires. I started to watch him or watch again in 05. I gravitated to him. That was a hell of a time to gravitate to him. That was, I used to hate John Cena. So I used to be those anti John Cena people. Me too. Me too. And I mean, rightfully so. It sucked. It wasn't good. But now that we don't see him nearly as much, yeah, all right. Liv attacked Rhea backstage, so we are immediately getting that. And it's what Fightful Selected reported over the last few months that this was going to kick off after WrestleMania. And what I love about this is it was completely one-sided. Liv just heaved a chair and started to whip that ass. RJ says, Liv fan here, but I don't know if she's the one to beat Rhea. Well, me too. I don't think so either necessarily, but it's a program that makes sense and is natural to have. Yeah, I don't think she's beating Rhea, but like you said, a a natural program for them to have. But I don't think that means she's beating her. Yeah, somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to lose. Is Rhea okay after almost getting beheaded by Liv? As best I know, yeah. Are we being trolled by WDB and AEW being a work on us? No, no. That's something uh, Vince Russo said years ago, though. 
He said that Vince was secretly in cahoots with AEW. Boy, what a dumbass he is. Uh, Indy Hartwell wrestles. Uh, FightfulSelect.com reported that it would be Roxanne Perez. And Roxanne Perez gets a pretty quick win. I love that on commentary they played up the history and how Roxanne had to vacate the title. Candice LeRae is there. Of course, she's very disappointed. But uh, this was fun, harmless. It's a way to promote the NXT brand. Corey Brennan reported last week that Roxanne Perez would be making appearances on the main roster sooner than later and also reported that NXT officials were pushing for her to win the NXT title. So two for two for our dude Corey Brennan and FightfulSelect.com. What'd you think of this? I, I, it, to me, it was like a harmless way to get her a win, further the indie Candace stuff, and promote NXT. I loved it. I think she came across as such a good freaking heel during this when she basically like yanked her head and was like, you didn't deserve my championship. I was like, yes, that is the kind of anger and pettiness I want to see the fact that this happened, you know, God, last year when Indy was champion at last year's Stand and Deliver. And she, one year later, did not forget and still threw it in her face that she did not deserve to be the champion. That was bloody great. I thought she looked phenomenal. She looked great. She looked like she belonged. And she her confidence wasn't shaken. Think about it. She's already done Royal Rumble appearances twice now, right? Twice. She now has gotten, you know, plenty of stand and deliver moments. But being on Raw after Mania, that's freaking huge, man. And you you did not see any sort of like, um, you, you didn't see her confidence lack at all. And you didn't see any nerves. She came out there and I think she was showing people that she is ready to be on the main roster whenever that moment comes. And she is NXT Women's Champion for a reason. So I liked this. This was very good. Natalia confronted Roxanne backstage, and then, therefore, every tweet was a very thirsty tweet about Natalia that I saw. She acknowledged it on Twitter. Y'all are, y'all are ridiculous. Wait, I missed that. What do you mean? Why was everybody posting thirsty tweets? I don't like to, to, to comment on, on such things. Do I need to rewatch this segment or did I just see it differently? Because I'm not a man that's like thirsty for, (laughs) you know, there you go. So I guess I just saw it differently. Thanks. Seamus is coming back. Crazy one Oh one says, uh, uh, Seamus contract extended or new Ricky Starks update. Nope. No Ricky Starks update. Besides the fact that he was there last night. I talked to him the other day. I saw him at GCW, but, he told me he was going to be there, but Seamus, so his deal was originally supposed to be up earlier this year. I don't know if there's been an extension, but he missed half of August, then September, October, November, December. And if it was up to early in the year, well, then guess what? He would have missed January as well. He would probably still have five and a half months of injury time on there at least. So he still got quite a bit uh, there. Sami Zayn promo backstage or Sami Zayn promo and then Imperium interrupt him as he's thanking everybody you deserve it chance all that then we get imperium gable and zane beat him this one got an awful lot of time uh as well what'd you think about this uh we we later on find out that sammy and gable will go one-on-one next week in sammy's hometown which is i i hope that gets 20 25 minutes that's what i want there i agree with you i want that too uh i'm excited because uh, I don't think Sammy's going to be losing in his hometown. I hope not. That would kind of suck. Although it would be really, yeah. what, God, what a heel move for Gable to win in some in this man's hometown, right? But I don't know. I'm looking forward to that match. I love this. I, I, I almost don't want, like, I don't want this friendship to end with, with Sammy and Chad Gable. I, I don't. Like, there's something about it that makes me just want to see more. And I think it's because both of these guys have something in common. And that is that they're both incredibly likable. And we both know they're both great wrestlers, but they're likable. And so I almost want to see this friendship unfold. But at the same time, because they are so likable, it makes me wonder, well, what if all of a sudden we see Chad Gable turn on Sami Zayn and things get really ugly? That's what I want. Right. In his hometown. I want want Zayn to... Zane to barely pull it off and then that big heel turn to happen. Right. So that's what you. I'm thinking. Like, even be even though they're so likable, I want to see that almost because of it, you know? So anyways, that is something that I think has a lot of leg in it and could, we could spend some time, a good amount of time there telling a story between those two. 
Nick Aldis speaks with Ava, or he's speaking with Ava and Adam Pierce. They're about, uh, or we see Andrade. He's officially on Raw. But Chad Cable, or, or Chelsea Green, rather, confronts them about wanting her WrestleMania moment. <laughs> They said, we got you. Well, it's her getting crushed by Jade Cargill. Now, this was actually, as Fightful Select reported, supposed to be happening earlier in the evening. But, you know, some things got moved around. They had to shave some time off of the show. And if you need to shave a little something off, <sighs> let's be real. Big nasty pubes are gross. You want that tree to stand taller. Sometimes you got to do a little bit of landscaping. Sometimes... You got to do a little bit of manscaping. With manscaped.com and that code FIFA, you're going to save 20% off your order and get free shipping. What a deal. And how about this? They've got a ton of deals on that site. They got a lot of bundles, a lot of packages to help out your package. But it's not just your package. It's your body. It's your hair. They got deodorant. They've got shampoo. They've got foot deodorant. They got ball toner. They got everything at manscaped.com. And when you use that code FIFA, get 20% off your order and free shipping. Just a plethora of different options. Maybe you want to try a little bit of everything. Maybe you just want to try one thing. Well, Manscaped and the code FIFA will get you there. Make that tree stand taller and trim it up a little bit with Manscaped. Chelsea Green got beat very quickly. I'm still looking at the Carter. natty thing. I, I have to still keep looking. I don't get it. Sorry. Not my place to say. Well, I, I was barely to starting to scroll, so I didn't see much. She didn't anyway. say that she thought, thought it was pretty funny, but still. Uh, Jade Cargill beats Chelsea. Chelsea is really good. She's just really, really good. Not a lot, really, you can say about this, though. No, it's phenomenal, actually, because Chelsea Green was hilarious. Um, <laughs> like, you knew she was about to get screwed, right? Everyone knew that. And I was, I actually didn't think it was going to be Jade because Jade the SmackDown superstar. But then, of course, it's Raw After Mania, so I guess all those rules are out the window. But I wasn't expecting Jade. I was thinking, like, oh, is this going to be, like, Julia? Is this going to be Alexa Bliss? Is this going to be, like, I don't know what, you know? So um, with it being Jade, I thought was interesting because this was her first singles match in WWE. So we don't we haven't seen her in a singles uh, match here. And I thought that was within itself the most interesting part of it because I didn't know exactly how they were going to do it. But I had a feeling that it was going to be the same formula that AEW used throughout her entire TBS championship reign. And that was exactly what they did. They did the exact same thing that she's been doing, that she was doing, excuse me, in AEW. So I thought that was interesting because that's what I expected. And then that's what ended up happening. But I did think that Chelsea Green, if you're going to do that with anybody, Chelsea Green was the perfect person to do that with. So I did like that. Thumbs up. She does great as always. Jake says, no big returns tonight or anything super crazy for a Raw after Mania. Am I just greedy or unrealistic based on previous years? Well, I mean, last year was one of the worst of all time. This year, we had two NXT stars, the confirmation and announcement of the draft. Sheamus is coming back. CM Punk showed up. The Rock showed up. I thought that they did pretty well. Jade Cargill was there as well. I thought it was solid. I mean, it doesn't have to have like six of these. What they will do now is pepper them in through the draft and SmackDown after Mania and all that as well. KE775 says, Mac, if he should have Punk on the show Thursday to respond to the tape. Yeah, probably. Hope he doesn't because uh, I'm sick of covering this shit, but you know what? Oh, well. Yeah, but then what if CM Punk comes out and he says some more stuff and then what? Well, then we're going to get back to this well, place again because then Tony's going to be like, well, now I got to do something else. And then what's that something else going to be? So, Sean, well, this is going to be never listen, ending. I've got a, uh, it already is never ending. This all started at Royal Rumble 2014. It all started there. I've got a video here on our YouTube. Uh, just type in CM Punk timeline. You'll hear all about it, my friends. Anti calls. Congratulations on getting married this weekend, by the way. Chelsea Green was the perfect choice for that spot. Indeed, indeed. And again, congratulations. We're so happy for you, my friend. Isaac says, good evening, Sean and Denise. Did you see the glitch during tonight's Raw? It said hello. They're playing a creepy song before the arena, in the arena, giving me white rabbit vibes. Well, Isaac, FightfulSelect.com last week reported that Bo Dallas is on his way back as teased in the Bray Wyatt documentary at the end 
And tonight we confirmed that those are references to him. So hot diggity damn. Hope that's I hope that's the answer you wanted. We also had the Jey Uso promo, the Bronson Reed promo, Ricochet shadow boxing. So it was such a contrast there. Such a contrast. Jonathan says, I don't get any of this punk and con drama. Didn't punk and Tony sign an NDA? You think Tony Khan is breaking the rules by showing the video? No, they went through the legal avenues to make sure that it was okay. Um, do you think WWE or Punk take more shots at AEW or the video? I think last week was WWE putting their foot on AEW's neck during the week in which they had the most publicity and the biggest show and one of the biggest they'd ever do. I don't think it will become a regular thing. But certainly, I think that the oversight surrounding it will be less than what it has been in recent years where Vince didn't want them met, uh, mentioned at all. But um, TBD. Drew McIntyre cut a promo. Oh, my God. He talked about how long his reign lasted, and he said that Damian Priest undid all the work that he did, and Seth Rollins that he called him Bondage Undertaker. And he said, I'd beat your ass, but you'd probably like it. <laughs> and we got a world heavyweight title top contender match. Scott says, do you think he resigns? His build feud with Punk makes me think so. Seems to be in the plans for months in the future. And they're doing a Scotland show, Denise. I, I find it hard to believe that WWE would let him go right now. He is white hot. Oh, God. Drew McIntyre right now is my favorite person on television. He is the funniest, the realist, and the most entertaining person right now in terms of like promos and just genuinely popping me and popping so many people. Um, and you mentioned the bondage undertaker line, the beat your ass, but you'd probably like it. I was like, I don't even know what to say after that. Like you've literally left me with my jaw completely dropped. Uh, it's funny stuff, man. And I love that he incorporates a lot of what is being said on the internet and he incorporates it into his promos. And it's just funny as all hell. I was almost bummed when like the entrances started happening because I'm like, oh, now it's match time um, because I could have listened to him for like a whole other 20 minutes, man. And I was worried that he wasn't going to cut a promo when he came out. I'm like, oh, we're going to go straight into the match, right? Which is kind of funny to say like, oh, we're going straight into the match. I wanted to hear Drew uh, come out and cut his promo. Uh, so when he when I saw him take the microphone, I had never been more excited to hear someone talk in a bit. Did you see what I sent him? The message I sent I him when he won the fight? I saw the NM. Never mind. Savage. Savage. <laughs> That's mean. What kind of friend are you? You're a terrible person. <laughs> well, uh, rock hard Joel Wood says, I know nothing is official, but I'm starting to think Drew's an MJF situation. Nope. Not an MJF situation. And if he is, he's he's actively telling people he hasn't re-signed uh, in the company. No official word, but I'm assuming something has been signed. I know Fightful can't report on assumptions. We do not report on assumptions. We do not report on vibes. That ain't what we do. Well, Jay Uso is facing Damian Priest for the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, I love this. You have four people that were immediately put into title contention. And the reason for that is Ricochet won a slapper of a match that Ivar told me was their WrestleMania. Bronson Reed won the Andre Battle Royal. And what I've been saying, first off, it should have been on WrestleMania. They should have done two of them. But what I was saying was, tell us it means something. And they did. Because as soon as he won that, he is in a top contender match for the world title. I think that's an appropriate prize to get put in a four-way. Drew had his moment sort of stolen from him. He was world champion yesterday. I'm fine with him being in it. And Jay also won this weekend. So I think that everybody involved in this match made sense. You had four winners here, Denise, being put in this match. I didn't know what direction they were going to go in. And surprisingly, I thought Jay was not the one that was going to win. He was the one that I was least expecting to win. So right. they definitely got me with that one. And the reason why I thought so was like, which was kind of stupid to be honest, but I, I kind of thought like that it wasn't going to be him because 
uh, of the ma- like the poor match that he had uh, with Jimmy wasn't that great, right? So I was thinking like, ah, I don't know if I really want to see Jay win. But when Jay won, I was hella excited. So it ended up working out very nicely. But I really thought they could have gone any direction here with any of these guys. And I would have been like, all right, cool. Like, this is a good way to go. But I think Jay being the number one contender for this was was pretty cool. But um, yeah, I, I don't know what to expect from this, though. But it feels it feels it feels kind of fresh though. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Ricochet 450 on the table was incredible. Oh my god! Yeah, you know, at first in the first angle that they showed, Sean, I thought, oh, why'd you do that, bro? Like, man, it looked like it hurt yeah. you more than it hurt him. But then when they did the aerial angle, like the bird's eye view camera shot, it looks like he did get more of Bronson Reed than I originally thought because yeah. I first thought that he got more of the commentary table. But then that third shot that they showed, I'm like, okay, he did actually land a little more so on Bronson. But that was crazy. I didn't even know he was going to make it because I just like, it looks like it was too far. And I'm like, well, if he does some sort of a flip, it look, makes it look harder than if you're just going straight through. So I, I was very impressed by that. Jay Miller just found it weird that Bronson didn't win the Fatal 4-Way since he lost his title match at EC and won the Andre. Hope he gets a push out of it. I'm sure. I think he will. I think he'll use that as fuel. K775 asks if I think it'll be Drew and Punk at Scotland. Would he be ready by then? I would hope they would be extra cautious considering his injury history. Ryan says them continuing this build. Is it safe to assume they extended Drew's contract? And Jonathan Corona asked the same. Will it be them at Clash of the Castle? I mean, the very, uh, the very fact that punk is taking off his arm brace and getting physical leads me to believe he's further along than, than, you know, than what we expected. And he said that he thought he could heal up way quicker than his last one. Uh, I think that drew McIntyre is going to resign with WWE. I do. And I think clash the castle punk versus drew would be a huge main event but i don't think you can put cm punk in the ring until then because i mean he's he does have an injury prone history right now well yeah even drew mcintyre said like i'm gonna attack the weakest part of your body but except for you it's your whole body i was like damn bro Uh, but it was funny though i laughed because (laughs) when when cm punk said that about the how he's gonna heal faster than the aw injury i was like damn there's even shots in the, the freaking injuries he's even well, burying his first injury but i know what he meant by that yeah by the he wasn't even sure if he like was that. coming back he right, wasn't even right. sure he was coming back at that point yeah but so it's i understood still funny, that though. it's still funny though it's like yeah hilarious actually guys get in your super chats and humper chats we're heading down the home stretch we're gonna let you hear from our great partners at bet online that had a, a ton of incredible odds on this weekend's WrestleMania and uh, prop bets as well. Hey guys, I'm here to tell you about betonline.ag, the official betting partner of Fightful. It's not just an online platform. They've been trusted for over 25 years. They boast a focus on the player approach and have built their reputation on offering their clients nothing but the best. From cutting edge technology to enticing promotions and the latest sports betting odds. Whether it be wrestling, MMA, boxing, or Football, baseball, basketball, or racing, anything you can think of. All major sporting events are covered by betonline.ag. Fast payouts, highest credit card acceptance industry-wide, safe and secure online environments, and their live betting feature allows you to bet on your favorites weekly and easily and in real time. Betonline.ag. That's where we're going at Fightful. That's where we suggest you go as well. That's where we get all of our odds at. BetOnline.ag. Only bet what you can, and please bet responsibly. Guys, I want to thank you all for being so patient with the uh, large number of sponsor reads that we had. Obviously, this is a big weekend for for viewership, so we want to try to give these people that support our shows, allow us to go on these trips, do these interviews, and do these shows uh, as much value as possible. And uh, I hope you sincerely check out Foco, Helix, Blue Chew, Manscaped, uh, Bet Online, Nord, all these people who have supported us uh, for so long and, and helped keep keep us afloat. Because I'll tell you what, ad rates and clicks and that type of stuff doesn't do it. The support of you guys and the support of our sponsors definitely do. We got some more super chats, humper chats here. Scott Stoop said, "When are Becky and Seth's contracts up?" Fightful Select reported June. Uh, I feel like they will resign as well. 
Scott. Uh, I, I really do. I, it's in all my conversations, in my conversations with them. I, I mean, I can tell you guys, I spoke to them on camera about it. They both think they'll get the deals done. Brian says, hey, Sean, some people are talking about what you said in your report today about TKO telling a top talent that anyone who knew about what Vince did would be gone as Triple H's job isn't safe. Is his job safe? So what this is are people assuming shit off the stuff that I reported and creating their own narrative and creating their own adventure. When I report something, those words are generally not open to interpretation. A talent told me, a very, very top talent told me that they extended their concern to an executive and that executive said, you know what? Nobody is indispensable. If we feel like we need to get rid of them, we will. And they feel that way because Vince left, the company thrived. Kevin Dunn left, the company thrived. Johnny Ace left, the company thrived. Mark Carano left, the company thrived. There were a lot of people who were around for a very, very long time in positions of power, whether or not they had anything to do with this. And they're gone and the company is thriving. I am not pointing a finger at Triple H, at Stephanie, or anybody like that. That is not what that is. If that was what was in the report, that's what would have been said in the report, period. I This is why I also always encourage people, subscribe to Fightful Select. Um, I've went off on aggregators enough for how irresponsibly they do things in general. General. But, um, yeah, just, just read the reporting. Also, we've got our great Discord over there on Fightful Select. I'm, uh, you, you'll notice I'm tweeting a hell of a lot less after tonight. So I'll be over on that discord hanging out. Elizabeth Kaplan says any info thoughts on who Tiffany Stratton's first main roster program will be with. Did you do an interview with her this week, Denise? I did. I got a quick one. I found out some great stuff about Tiffany Stratton, by the way. Did you, did she do big numbers for you? Uh, I haven't checked, but I think they're doing all I'll right. Check. I'll check right now. Let me see. Eh, pretty, pretty solid. Yeah. She blew everybody out of the water on our Australia interviews. And also when I approached her, she's like, she's like, heard a lot about you. And I was like, what the, what the, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> You're like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I was, I was like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, I mean, she, I think she followed me on Twitter or something like that a while back. I think so. Maybe, maybe that was somebody else. I think it was Nikita. But I was like, damn, what I do? You using Nikita and Tiffany Stratton. <laughs> Uh, no, no, I just, I thought so, but I, I remembered there was one that I had interviewed and one that I hadn't, um, but very nice, really great. Uh, we talked about how she got the reaction from the audience and clearly wasn't expecting it. And she really put over Becky big time for helping her in NXT. I would kind of like Becky to welcome her to the main roster a little bit, but I think that they'll probably... I think they're probably looking at things and reevaluating because she clearly got way more over as a baby face than they anticipated. I, yeah, I they definitely they, did. I don't think they planned on that. Kyle says, hi, Fightful. want to thank you for the photo, Denise. It made my weekend Fightful for life. Hell yeah, man. That's cool. I, I, always, I met a lot of people this weekend. It was very nice. Black Mega Man says, when are you getting a dude wipe sponsorship? I, I would love one. I mean, honestly, I've been telling Manscaped like forever, like just get into the, the wipes business and you've got a monopoly on, on the bathroom, bros. Murray says, I've been watching Fightful tonight. My Padres rallied from an 8-0 deficit. Take a 9-8 lead. Here's 10 bucks. Well, hell yeah, brother. I watched Ellie De La Cruz hit a home run and an inside the park home run today. So I'm pretty happy about that. The Reds are, are winning some ball games right now. Rock hard Joel Wood says, based on everything we know about Punk, can't see them showing that video without responding in some fashion. Yeah, I fully expect him to respond in some fashion, or he'll be asked about it, even though he won't really... I don't think he really did want to talk about AEW, but once he did, he just the floodgates opened. Rock hard Joel Wood says, regarding the Rock promo, I found it interesting. He said Cody's story is with Roman is over, as if he's already saying Roman isn't getting a rematch. Well. I mean, under normal circumstances, you'd be like, well, why wouldn't Roman get a rematch, right? But I've seen some champions in UFC that once they lose that championship, they're like, I don't necessarily want that. I don't want the weight of that anymore. And uh, Roman's going to be gone for a while. 
Did you notice right before Ricochet at the 450, he looked over at Samantha and said, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was told that was, uh, Corey Brennan was told that was uh, just an on-the-fly thing that went over really, really well. But Denise, what do you got going on? Well, honestly, the big thing that I want to promote is just my YouTube channel because I post a bunch of stuff there. And I'm so close to hitting 150K. I'm like 400 and something subscribers away. So if you guys can go there and support, that'd be really great. Um, I only got a couple of interviews this time, which was a little bit stressful for me, Sean, because, you know, I I really count on that stuff. So uh, please go check those out. Give those some love because that's truly how I make my money back on these trips. So if you can head on over to the YouTube channel, um, just search my name up and check out some of the content. Please do. Please support that. Um, please check out all of our content uh, over on Fightful Select. I'll be dropping the backstage report uh, Tuesday. Steven Jensen did an hour long review of the collective, all that stuff. Make sure you guys check it out. Caden says House of Torture and WWE would feed families. You could have fed somebody with that $2 instead of sending us that horrible, horrible super chat. Um, guys, we are on podcast platforms everywhere. Audio, especially. Leave us a nice review. Leave a thumbs up. I want to engage more with you guys in the comments here on YouTube. But yeah. Whoa, somebody said, thought you guys get comped hotel rooms and flights to these PLEs. No, 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 no. We are paying out of our own pocket or people go, oh, Fightful pays for it. I am Fightful. I am Fightful. Uh, Denise pays for her own shit. Denise is going for herself there. She's not going on behalf of an outlet. So no, we... WWE ain't paying for that, and I wouldn't accept their money even if they did. But I think people forget that. I know it sounds silly, but running a YouTube channel is actually a business. <laughs> yeah. It's like if you sell products, you're paying for those products and the material. That's literally what it's like, but instead in a, in a different sort of a sense. So I think sometimes people forget that because it, it feels different. Somebody says, Jimmy doesn't cover your stuff, Sean. I am part owner of the company now, guys. Jimmy... Jimmy doesn't do anything. It would be Fightful. Fightful is is finally making money now. I'll say that. But um, fortunately, I I don't. I think I'll be flying to Canada. I'll probably be doing that in July. But other than that, I might not have to take another flight all year. I think I'm driving to Cleveland and uh, driving to Winston Salem this year. But guys, thank you all so much. Uh, again, support original creators. Support people like Denise who do that work, Uh, support people like Muscle Man Malcolm, who takes himself out to shows as a very young person in this industry. Guys like Ricky Chino, who drove his ass all the way, that drives everywhere. Please support those people that do the legwork, the Demon Divas of the world, and Fightful, and all these people that are busting their ass and doing original work. Uh, And, and, you know, I, I want them to reap the benefits of it as opposed to other people. Is Roman getting written off Friday? Fatu, maybe. Do you think, is Roman going to be on SmackDown? Did they advertise that? No, they advertised Bailey and Cody Rhodes. Those were the two people that were advertised. Okay. Until next time, guys, we're out.